Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, just doing a teaching now on um, harvesting is not always automatic, and um, this is this is this is something that's new to me as well. And um, sowing and reaping is not new to me, but this is new to me. See, um, I remember the first time I heard about um, uh, giving uh, by Keith Moore, and um, he he talked about how um, he had saved up money for some shoes, and um, the uh, you know he needed a pair of shoes, and uh, he was at Bible college one day, and uh, the um, Holy Spirit came on him and said. Uh, I want you to give that shoe money um, to the minister. Um, he's believing for a pair of brown shoes. And he says, well, you know, like, he looks like he's got nice shoes, you know. He says, I really needed the shoes, you know. And he says, well, I've told you to do it. And so he went up to this um, uh, lecturer, professor, whatever, whatever you call it, irrelevant, and he says, you wouldn't happen to be believing for a pair of brown shoes, would you? And the man, he paused and he called his wife over. And he said, just repeat what you said again, you know. He says, you wouldn't happen to be believing for a pair of brown shoes, would you? And, and he said, well, actually, uh, me and my wife agreed for that. And, uh, and he goes, well, the Lord's told me to give this to you. And he says, as a result of him obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit, is that he never in his life has had to buy shoes ever again. He's lived in a constant harvest of shoes. Uh, people give him their credit cards and cards and say, "What? Why don't you just buy yourself some new shoes?" He says, "He's, he's got alligator shoes. He's got leather shoes. He's got sport shoes. He's got tennis shoes." And um, God tested me in this area. And uh, he said to me, you know, uh, I won't mention the person's name, but um, I was actually out of work at the time. And, and I had a debit card and um, I had a little bit of an overdraft, but it, it cost him money. I didn't actually have any money. <laughs> uh, and I was at the shops with you just because... In Australia, it gets hot, so you go to the shops to get the air con, you know. <laughs> and so I was there with this girl. And uh, the Lord says, go buy some shoes for church. And I'm like, come on, Lord. <laughs> you know, I got zero to my name, you know. And um, I went in there, you know, and I said, I said, I said, I said the Lord told me, and, you know, he wants me to buy you some shoes. And... Um, she picked out the shoes that she wanted, and um, it wasn't those spendless shoes either. <laughs> and uh, you know, the shopkeeper says, "Oh, did you get like two for half price? You know, like you get a second pair half price." And the, and the person goes, "Can I have another pair?" And I'm like, "Fudge!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, like, uh, and um, and the Holy Spirit spoke on the inside of me and says, "Get her another pair." And I said, "Yeah, yeah, all right, okay." You know, because I am generous. Praise the Lord. And um, I did that, and no word of a lie. I spent about five years. Every time I had a pair of shoes wear out, God got me a new pair. I had all sorts of shoes. I, I had leather shoes for church. I, I had. I had New Balance, you know, that God gave me shoes that I liked, you know, and I had lots of shoes. And, um, but you know what? The last few years, when my mother was actually cursed, um, and, and she had a stroke, um, and that wasn't the only place I got shoes, but it was, it was a big place, you know, my mother would say, oh, I've got to get your shoes, you know. Um, God bless me, Mum. But uh, like that harvest stopped, and and you know what I, I couldn't understand, and and you know what all my harvest had stopped. You know what I mean? And um, I ended up losing my homes, both my homes, and um, especially after I got ordained. You know, I, d I just lost everything. You know, I lost my jobs, and everyone hated me, and 
um, Satan cut off my food and it's just, uh, and I, I couldn't understand, you know, like I used to always get shoes, you know what I mean? Like uh, sowing and reaping worked uh, and why has it stopped? And, um, you know, I've done a real big study. I've studied so much about prosperity, uh, not because I love money. It, it's because now, now I'm looking at a uh, $100,000 child support debt and, um, I'm also looking at $16,000 school fees, uh, Christian school fees, which my children got thrown out of. Uh, and like, like I'm blacklisted from the secular world and, and Christians just don't like to give. Uh, and I don't understand why I get angry with them. Uh, and it's because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. So if I have to complain about it or coerce, I can't accept their offering. And they don't, they're like, oh, you got angry about it. Well, you, you know, like when the Holy Spirit asks you to do something, you just do it. You know what I mean? Because you're going to be on the receiving end of a multiplied harvest. And the Bible talks about the hundredfold. And I've taught on the blessing before that you can actually claim more than the stars of heaven. But I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm working out now. It wasn't just a, a demonic issue because I'm in deliverance ministry. I'm working out now why that harvest has come to a stop. And I'm going to teach on it now. And uh, I believe this is going to put an end to it. I really do. And that, that's why the Lord's got me to teach on it. Because, you know, even here in here in Perth, Western Australia, I mean, I mean, some people that do are diligent in the church will know about it. But it's not taught even in the word of faith here. There's a lot of holes in prosperity. They teach, they're very good teachers on faith, uh, on faith but there's, a, there's a, like teaching on, uh, the, you know, the churches themselves, they borrow money. And I've done that in the past before I knew, uh, you know, and uh, that got me into a lot of trouble because it, the servant's a slave to lender. If, if, if you're going to be successful, you, you don't want the devil to have any leverage. And um, I borrowed money for homes and I should have believed for a debt-free home. But my faith wasn't that strong um, and I didn't know. So uh, I wish they would have taught that at church. I found out from a, another faith ministry. I wish they would have taught it in the faith ministry I was in. They didn't borrow money for a house. I wish they taught that. But uh, I'm learning the hard way. But you know what? I'm, I'm hoping they're going to see this video and they're going to take it on board that... Uh, because that they've sown millions of dollars and they haven't got a return. And I know why. Partly, yes, because they borrowed money. But that's not the big reason. I mean, they have to repent for that. Um, uh, this is the reason I'm going to teach on it now. Is that harvesting is not always automatic. I've had automatic harvests. I'm, I'm not, you know... I got annoyed. A lot of these people were getting harvested the next day or, or the same day. And I'm just like, Lord, you know, some harvest away for years. What's going on? You know? And uh, they brag and say, oh, it's no problem. Give me no units. Got to make sure your needs are net. And I'm just like, what's going on? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to teach on it now. So if we've got to, um, you're going to get the answer by the end of this. Harvesting isn't always automatic. Proverbs 10 Verse 5, he who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. So you can sleep through your harvest. See, um, we've been taught that, you know, you, you, you just sow and then, and, and then you'll reap. Uh, and that's not true because if you sleep during harvest, you know, it's a shame. So there's a requirement of you to actually call in the harvest because faith is voice activated. So yes, there's an, there needs to be an expectation of a return and churches that have taught, no, you, you give and you don't expect to receive. Well, that's not biblical because you're not harvesting. You know, like a seed, when a farmer plants his seed, he expects a harvest. You don't expect it from the person that you're giving it from. You expect it from God. And a lot of times God uses people. So if they try and rob it, you get annoyed. <laughs> they're like, oh, I got all this money for nothing. And it wasn't for nothing. You know, they're going, oh, why is all these things happening to me? Well, uh, 
Maybe God told you to give it because it wasn't yours. You didn't. <laughs> you know, God bless them. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. All right. Now let's turn to uh, Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. And it says here, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, no overseer, no ruler, overseas her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. So even an ant has to bring in the harvest. So there's something that we need to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there has, there has been other people that have done teachings on this, you know. Uh, but they're very, very long teachings, and I've uh, condensed it down, so you don't have to listen to hours. But they're very good teachings, you know. If you want to go deeper, just you, YouTube, calling in your harvest, you get some good teachings. Now um, I'm going to go to Galatians six. Might have to pause this while I get it. Right, Galatians 6, 7 to 9. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. So you reap on the good and the bad of whatever you do. For he who sows of the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows of the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That also means, in another translation, if you don't give up. So, whatever good or bad you do, you reap it. Now, you see, the devil is an accuser. He's always sitting there going to God and saying, look, such and such did this, this and that. So, if you've done something wicked, you know what I mean, he's going to make sure that you get a harvest of it. That's why you're reaping the, the wicked harvest part, more so then you reap the uh, the good part. Because the good part, it's your job to call it in. You've got to be like the ant. Because faith is voice activated. Now, I knew about confessing scriptures of the word that you're standing on for prayers. And I'd be like David. I'd say, send now prosperity. That's what David said it in the Psalms. And so I do. I say, Lord, I need prosperity. Send out prosperity. And I call in my prayers. I call in my prayers. And I call in prosperity. And I call in money. I call in whatever I need. But the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, says when you give your offering, it becomes seed. Here's the point I'm getting at. I've been calling in what I needed in my prayers and such and such and this. But I should have been calling what what do you need to bring in from seed harvest i should have been calling in the harvest and you've noticed uh, some of the people that i've messaged i'm calling in the harvest by faith and we're going to do this at the end of this but that's not it that's not the finish of it right because i I just do it once in a while but it says here let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart if we don't give up so, if, if a demonic spirit or wicked person is holding up what belongs to us, right? I didn't say whatever it is. It's, it's not enough just to call it in once. You need to call it in every day till you get it. That's the thing. Some harvest, that's why, you, you, you know, some people have sowed and it's been many months before they got something because the devil was holding it up. Uh, um, we see this with Daniel with the Prince of Persia. He was, you know, the, the, the angel was held up 21 days until Archangel Michael came in. But but what was Daniel doing? He was praying. He was praying and fasting. So he, he was doing something. And so I've learned from this, you know. I started calling in the harvest. I've done a teaching. I've, I've listened to the, I'm not going to mention the teacher's names because some people think they're false prophets, but this is Bible. You know, I've filtered it for you. You've got the scriptures there. You know, don't believe me, believe the word of God. So my issue was, I've got to be calling in the harvest every day. And you know what? You can't over call it in. You can't overdose on, on faith. You can do it three times a day if you want. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. 
So that was my issue. My issue was I was just doing it once in a while and I should have been doing it every day. Praise the Lord. Specifically the harvest. Praise the Lord. So now we're going to go to Mark 4, 26 to 29. This is uh, the parable of the growing seed. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Obviously, that's the word of God, that seed there. And should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crop by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain and head. And when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. So your job is to sow that seed. That's your job. The ground brings forth fruit itself. God provides the increase, the growth. But it's your job to put in the sickle to bring in the harvest. And we do that with our faith, which is voice activated. Praise the Lord. And we see that in Mark 11, 23, so on, where it says you have what you say, you know, whoever says to this man, you, you, you know, you know, if you've got a grain a faith of a grain of mustard seed, you'll say faith is void. They, 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 we've, we've got to reap with our words. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I bet, I, you know, I was doing that, but I wasn't specifically saying harvest i was i was the the specific prophetic words i was quoting to come in and calling them in you know i'd sown in prophetic words and you know and i just you know and i was saying god you know these prophetic words were meant to come in 30 to 90 days and i haven't had them you know i haven't received them because i'm calling in the prophetic words but i've sown into it a seed and i should have been calling in the harvest not the prophetic word and it wasn't taught, you know, it wasn't taught. So I've gone these years without a harvest and I've suffered. Now I'm in a big mess because I wasn't taught properly. So, so um, you, you know, that the, the, the word of God says, my citizens perish due to lack of knowledge. Where you've got a problem, there's usually a lack of knowledge. Praise them. There's another thing I've got to address as well. Worries and cares choke the word. It says that in the parable of the sower. People say, I pray for them and then they go, oh, can I have this? Can I have this? They start begging. They start worrying. And I'm just like, worrying chokes the word. Also, you need to tithe if you want a decent harvest because the devourer will eat your seed. So you have to tithe if you want a full harvest. Have to do it. If you don't tithe, it's a bad idea. So, so the, so people know the reason I get upset with people because I know God's a ask them, you know, and I don't want to beg because as soon as I ask, you know, they're not cheerful givers, they're grudging givers and, and they won't get blessed. You know what I mean? And, and I just can't do it. And God doesn't want to accept the offering. People just think that they, just, they don't understand it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an offering's a very sacred thing. That's why God didn't accept Cain's offering. Cain didn't give his best offering. He accept Abel. Abel had a, a good attitude. Uh, and, you know, people might get upset. Oh, you're trying to say I've got a bad attitude. Well, you, you probably didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's a serious thing, you know, that it, it, when God says to do something and you don't. And, and if I have to ask then, well, there's no blessing in it. You know, you, the blessing's from obeying God. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, anyway. So, you know, you know, George Mueller, he looked after orphans and he never asked for anything. People just were led by the Holy Spirit. You know, he probably knew this, though. He, he read the, the Bible three three times a year. You know, he had a, he had great faith. He would have known this. But, you know, the information gets lost. And um, it's what you don't know that's causing your problems. You know, you've got churches continually borrowing money because obviously they don't know how to call in the harvest. Send out the ministering spirits, get it in. Call it by faith. You get what you say. You know what I mean? Call in the harvest. The other thing is because of the borrowing, you know, it's, it, it, it's you know, anti-covenant, you know. You, you, borrowing doesn't work. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, now let's go to Ecclesiastes 11.4. This is another reason why people don't uh, read. Okay. Ecclesiastes 11.4, it says... 
Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. He who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the cloud, clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. So if you look at the weather, I know some people, they don't do anything unless they look at the weather. The weather's not always right. And it's the same like, you know, it's saying if you look at the clouds, you won't sow. And, and you look at the conditions, you won't reap. Isaac sowed in a famine and he reaped a hundredfold. He didn't look at the weather, he just obeyed God. If you look for a good time to sow, you'll never, you will never end up, up, you will never end up sowing. That's the moral of the story. People are going, oh, when things get better, I'll do it. Things are never going to get, the devil will see to it that things will never get better to sow. It, even if it's a dollar, just sow that. See what God does. Yeah, that's what you do. And then you increase that to two dollars. This is what I did when I was working. You know, you know I'll say it, you know, I started off on 50,000 a year as a mechanical fitter. Don't failed as a minister, don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I then I went up to seventy thousand, and then I went up to ninety thousand, then I went up to one hundred and thirty, uh, and then I, you know, I was, I was so massive, you know, full tax returns, everything. I was just dropping everything in there. Every every time God said so, 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 sort of, I sowed everything, you know. I would have sown over half a mil. <laughs> and you know, and 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 didn't rate. <laughs> That's the annoying thing. I will now. I will now after this teaching. Praise the Lord. Um, and um, and until I got up, I got up to two hundred and seventy grand a year. It wasn't. It wasn't with the blessing of the Lord, though. It wasn't without toil. It was with toil, and I kept confessing it because I didn't understand the blessing of the Lord. I, got, I taught. I, I learned half of it in church. You know what I mean? Uh, it was Bill Winston that really opened it up for me. And uh, next time around, it won't be with toil. It'll be easy money. I, I worked hard for that money. It was it was hard graft. I, I didn't see my children or anything. Worked a lot. A lot. There's it. Um, I, I knew the promise, but I, I didn't know how to appropriate the blessing. And uh, that's why I did a teaching on it. Praise the Lord. Um, the um, it's not just a matter of confession. There's, there's a bit more to it. But um, yeah, so uh, I, I, I'm teaching you all you guys where I made mistakes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like <laughs> and I, I wish that the people that taught me had more knowledge uh, and they were diligent. And, um, but, uh, yeah, if you look at the conditions or when it's better for you to sow, you'll never do it. And then you'll never reap. If you don't put, if you don't sow finances, you won't reap finances. People say, well, I'll just give my time. Well, you're going to reap long life. Even that has to be called in by faith. Well, you're not going to get it. <laughs> the devil will see that you won't get it. You know? So, um, that's a big thing. Now let's look at someone who didn't look at the weather. Right. Let's go to Genesis. And you've heard me teach on this. People hear me teach on this one all the time. It's a good one. Genesis 26. And this is when the blessing went to Isaac. Uh, and we start from verse 1. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines and Gerar. And the Lord be Peter and yada, yada, yada. So there's a famine in the land. Not No, he didn't look at the clouds. There's no rain. When there's no rain, farmers don't sow. Honestly, if there's drought, they don't sow, you know, because they're not going to reap. But you know what? He obeyed God. He knew spiritually it's always a good time to reap. It's always a good time to sow. So actually, the harder it is to sow, the bigger the, the increase of the harvest that you're going to get. That's the good news. Um, so if we go down to verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land without rain. That's mega faith. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. So a lot of ministers claim the hundredfold. I claim the other one in this, uh, which is uh, uh, verse 4, I think it is. Uh, and I'll make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. That's what I pronounce. I believe that. I believe more than a hundredfold. 
You know, if you find the word of God and it's related to seed, well, you can claim it. Uh, <laughs> some people claim the thousand fold. Um, but uh, more than the stars there, but I'm sure there's more than a thousand uh, stars. Praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> and uh, one more scripture. Let me get, uh, let's turn to Jeremiah 17, verses 7 to 8. Jeremiah 17, verses 7 to 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaves will be green, a green sign of prosperity, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, no worries, when there's no rain, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So this statement is stating is that blessed is a man that hopes in the Lord and it describes someone that trusts in God will always yield fruit no matter the government, no matter the weather, no matter the work situation, that they will always prosper if they trust the Lord. They'll always prosper. So, um, hallelujah, hallelujah. It doesn't matter if there's a financial uh, collapse. There's a word to stand on and speak. If you're going through hard times, so you're going to reap. Now, let's call on that harvest, shall we? Father God, just lift up everyone out of the sound of my voice. Some of them have been sown for 20, 30, 40 years, Lord Jesus. Some less. And and you know what? They knew about tithing. They know about they knew about sowing, they knew about reaping. Some may have been taught that um you shouldn't expect it back. Well that's wrong. You know, a farmer when he plants seed in the ground expects a crop. You, you, you know, and, and it's so you have an abundance to give in the areas that God wants to give the poor orphan with you, whatever ministry, preaching ministry, whatever ministry it is that God wants you to help to get the gospel to all nations, to set people free. Um, you know, there's there's a reason behind it. And so you'll be materially blessed. God also wants you to be materially blessed. That's why he said there's mansions in heaven. Let it be here on earth as it is in heaven. God wants you to prosper now. You've got to get rid of that religious mindset, you know. But if you just say, well, I'm fine. I just want my needs met. It's very selfish, you know. It's saying, I don't care about anyone else. My needs are met. It, it, it's false humility. It's religious. It was taught by the mainstream church. Their thinking is wrong. It's rooted in Catholicism. Eastern religion, where suffering is 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 like shown honor to God. It's not true. So um, let's call on those harvests, shall we? Angels, ministering spirits, we just call in everyone's harvest. Bring in their harvest. Bring in their harvest. Bring in their finances. Cancel every debt, Lord Jesus. We call it in. We call on the harvest. Receive the harvest. Receive all your harvest of every seed you've sown. Receive it in Jesus' money. Receive it multiplied more than the stars heaven. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for anyone listening to this, you know, because um, there's a lot of religious people that are not born again, you know, because this is this really annoys me. They go, well, well, I went to the Anglican Church. I went to the Presbyterian. I went to the Baptist Church. If they're not doing an altar call for you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour, you're not saved. Because faith is voice activated. You've got to make a confession of faith, of faith to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. So, so if you're part of that religious uh, group that have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking tongues, or this is the first time you've heard about Jesus Christ, you want eternal life, say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me our sins. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me, to take my sins. And you rose him from the dead three days later. And then he's seated in heavenly places. I make Jesus Christ my Lord and Saviour. I surrender my will to him and I'll do whatever he says. Now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, yeah. oh, also repent of your sins. I'm pretty sure I said that. Um, uh, if you said that prayer, I believe you're born again. We impart the Holy Spirit with evidence, speaking tongues. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. And the anointing of God come upon you to set you free from all demons, poverty mindset, lack, curses, stinginess, uh, uh, 
frugalness, orphan spirit, be set free, religious mindset, religious spirit, Pharisee spirit, Sadducee spirit, yeah, greed, love of money and mammon, be set free now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a good day and be blessed and expect your harvest. And if you've been sown for 30 years, expect the harvest on that multiplied. Praise the Lord. Some, some of you are going to be receiving massive harvests. You know, and I'm not asking you to give me money, but if God tells you to do, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'll, I'll receive it. Um, praise the Lord. God bless.